Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to remove your soft top from your BMW Z4 and uh, in part two I'll be doing motor replacement and motor testing. Uh, you're going to want to start off by opening your soft top to the halfway position. Just get a dumb latch from the front. For those of you whose motors aren't working, your top is probably going to stop here. It's not going to move. You want to come to the trunk. Pull on your red tab. Yes, I'm a 90s kid, excuse me. Alright. This tab, just pull it out and twist it so it stays open. Just like that. And you're gonna come over here. And for mine, it's a bit tricky. It's gonna stop here. So, unless you at the same time reach around and pull that red tab, my top's gonna stay here. So I'm gonna let go and uh, do that right now. All right, so step two, you just want to bring your seats all the way to the front for a passenger and driver. So I'll do that now. Next, disconnect your battery. I just undid my uh, positive for the purposes of my negative being ghetto rigged because it was broken. But try doing both if you can. Not going to bother with mine. And afterwards, you're going to go around your top with blue painter's tape. Just tape it off all the way around so you don't damage it when you're removing the soft top. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and come back when I'm done. All right, got that done. Of course, you guys don't wanna hit the trunk. We're gonna to have to open that up again a couple times for the video or for the process. Uh, next up, we wanna remove the two rubber uh, weather strips right here and the strips along the door. I'm gonna put the camera down and do that and then come back. I wanna say it's just pull, but I might see something here that needs to be undone. I'll let you guys know in a moment. Okay, so it's out. <clears throat> uh, it's connected, pretty much you have to pull, uh, if you're looking at it this way. The inside, right here, is shoved pretty tightly in between here. The plastic and the paint or the body so just pull it out um, besides that there is a clip that you have to undo uh, the easiest way to do it actually latches on to here so just take a flathead and undo it there let me see if it'll focus there it is take a flathead and then uh, besides that it's just three pieces of sticky tape one two and a third long one up top so again it's just like that I'm gonna go ahead and do the passenger side now be careful not to push too hard or you're gonna rip this like I did here so all right just lift this up and poke out of the flathead easy thing to do this one came out much easier and it's just upside down you got uh, your clip two pieces uh, double-sided tape and the third one's up top so it's just like this so now you just want to do the weather stripping, bring it on back. All you have to do is just pull, bring it uh, part way down. You don't have to take it all the way off. Go ahead and do the same thing with the other side. Next, you want to undo the soft top floor. from the floor itself, just pull, down, disconnect, that's it, and then you want to undo your clips, I've already pushed them up, but you should have two or three, one, two, three, same thing on that side, one, two, three, and then if you notice, this part of the floor, is attached yeah. it's just attached here here I think that there sorry one two and three just by uh hinges you just want to push that off lift and pull out do that for both sides I'll do that right now so it helps to bring your top back up to do this but when you come back in after you push out the panels or the three uh two to three clips on each side that I was telling you about. Um, and this is already disconnected. All you're doing is taking your finger and pushing. So this is not disconnected, it's free. So we're gonna do this side. 
Hopefully it does it as well. You're just gonna push. Yep. So you're free. That's it. So you just wanna lift and remove now. So these are what your clips look like, and this is what it looks like with the floor. My top's currently up. Again, here's your flap. And your flap. When you come in here, this is face up, face down, and you just we're connected here and here. That's it. Next you want to undo your soft top weather stripping. This rubber is supposed to stay mounted to your top. Don't try to undo it. You're just removing it from the actual car itself. So I'm going to do that, go all the way around, and I'll be back. It's best to do this step with your top half up or closed, and this is how it looks like. So you're actually still connected to your top, you're just pulling up or pulling out all the way around. And I'll finish that. And it's done. There is a tiny gap on each side right here in the weather stripping, but looks like it should be there. Next, we want to bring the top down and remove our panels one two and three and there's some screws I'll show you in a moment okay so I have the panel off and you're gonna have a uh, have five uh, Phillips here one two three four five that are actually holding your uh, plastic you're not working on the subwoofer box so take those out and then up top here you have another uh, Phillips up top. Okay, so with the uh, both sides done, you now have enough room to reach back. I mean, you can wiggle this plenty freely. On the driver's side, you're going to have two wires coming down, one of which is going to have uh, two plugs to it. So there's three total on the driver's side. On the passenger side, you only have one. If you look here, Mine, my top has probably been worked on already because I see now that um, they're not properly mounted to the clips that they are normally on. Uh, as you can see here, my driver's side is fine. My passenger side is already undone. Doesn't matter though. So follow these wires right here, these two wires leading from the top, and unplug those two, or three total. And then on the passenger side, And then on the passenger side, and on the passenger side, you just have uh, this one leading to one plug right here. So go ahead and undo all those. It's a plug I'm having a hard time reaching just because I have a injured finger. But if you want to undo this bolt, it's connected to that white box and take that off. What your three plugs look like. Uh, you're not going to have a hard time plugging them back together because they are all different. This small one was connected to the white box that we had to undo that bolt for. And then on the other side, we just had uh, this big one right here and that's all. Alright guys, so next you're in the trunk. Here's your outside. You're going to go around, look under. Let me get this light on here. You're going to see this silver bar that goes all the way around in the shape of you. And you're going to find uh, size 10 uh, bolts. There should be seven of them uh, spread around that you want to remove. You have uh, one, one here, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven is over there. Going back into your car, you have uh, two T40 uh, bolts. One's in the upper hole, and one's located right there in the uh, air vent location. You can loosen these partially, you have to take these out all the way. I'm going to go ahead and take both of them out on both sides uh, and set them aside and that should be the final step before we're ready to remove with two people. 
All right, so these are how they look like. You got two if you want to keep the top on top, bottom on bo bottom so you don't mix them up, just mark it. Now, lastly, come to the trunk and you're going to find two metal clips in the back. Let me get a light. You're going to see two metal clips in the back in your trunk towards the front that the U is going to be touching. For this side, it was already out. See that clip? You want to lift up and forward to undo it. You got one there. So go ahead and undo that. And then the top's ready to be picked up and uh, moved out. That was a bit tiring. Alright, so the easiest thing to do is to uh, lay in the trunk on your back and pretty much grab the U. Excuse me. Grab the U, the silver part of your U that's going around, and uh, pop it out. Besides that, I had taken a pin popper, a metal pin popper and worked it loose a bit before I did that. So now the top should be ready to be lifted out with two people. All right, I had to wait a couple hours to get a second hand to help me with the top, but it came out fairly easy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I have to get it to the half position and uh, when you want to bring it up, lift it from your uh, front sides first. The motor wasn't connected on mine, so I had to bring that out separately. It was holding me back. And uh, just lift up from the front, and then tilt it backwards and push it out. So, this is it. This is the uh, dreaded, dreaded uh, box that absolutely sucks. You can tell it's already compromised here. It's a giant gap. Well, let me show you those two clips that we were fighting with. There's one. And your second one. Mosquitoes are starting to come out, I'm sorry. Alright, that's it. Easy peasy. Alright guys, so for testing if your uh, soft top motor is bad, uh, two ways to do it. You can either use uh, the terminals from your wire here. It's the only one that's actually connected to your motor. Or you can just unplug it from the bottom like I did and use your terminals directly. Just uh, be careful for an arc if it arcs. All you want to do is take a battery, test if it's good with a voltmeter. Uh, two wires, hook them up positive or negative. It doesn't matter which way you hook it up, which uh, whether you want to do positive on the left or the right one, for example. Uh, when you touch it one way, your top should be opening. And when you touch it the other way, your top should be closing. Uh, with me, when I touched it, it was a tiny arc, but nothing happened, so I know my motor is bad. So I went out, I already bought a new one sitting there. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and go through the process of how to actually change your motor um, with your lines and all that. So here we go. So the first thing you want to do is just prep your new wiring, uh, depends on, depending on how corroded your wires are on the bottom of your old motor. Mine weren't too bad, but I went ahead and replaced them anyways. I had snipped uh, the old connections off for the bottom. The new motor does come with new connectors, and they have male on them, so you want to go ahead and attach female uh, quick disconnects to your wiring, which I already went ahead and did that. So here are my females and I'm going to attach them together uh, blue with blue, green and green and uh, tape them up, get them ready to go to where all I have to do is just uh, connect it from the bottom with these two uh, female to male ports. So a quick note, just keep in mind where your green and your blue wires are on the side of the motor. The old motor here has a green on the right hand of the hydraulic line side and the hydraulic line side on the new one has a blue on the right hand side so yeah doesn't really matter I'm going to be doing the trunk relocation so I can flop these around easily if they're mistaken but I'm going to go ahead and put the green on the uh, the left 
and the blue on the right here. So. Also, if you're looking at your motor, you'll see four numbers, 14, 12, uh, 13, and 11. Make sure your motor matches. Uh, that represents which hydraulic line goes to which part. So on this motor that I have, they pulled it by VIN, so luckily it matches. I think this is a newer motor. It's been replaced before, and that's why the newer motors I hear don't match the numbers exactly or the older ones have different numbers than the newer ones, so you have to do some flip flip flopping around with the wiring or with the hydraulic lines to make sure that you know 14 goes where 14 is supposed to go. So luckily for me, it's the same thing. So I'm about to just uh, undo the bolts, move them onto the new one, and then on the side here, you have one uh, one screw there, one screw on top, and then one screw on the side. I'm just gonna lift that assembly out and. Uh, Bring it onto that new one as well. Uh, be sure on the hydraulic lines, do one at a time because you don't want to uh, lose your fluid. Try and keep your fluid here, although the new motors should all come with a uh, fluid in the retainer up top. Uh, but if you don't remember, there should be, if I'm not mistaken, fluids in the hydraulic lines as well. Um, I think my cost is about $30 for uh, hydraulic line fluid for BMW. So hopefully I won't need that because I don't plan on spilling, but here we go. All right, so I got half of it done. I have a few tips and tricks for you on the way. I didn't lose too much fluid. Uh, just uh, keep it sideways or upside down uh, when you're undoing these uh, lines, and it'll help from you losing too much fluid when you're doing it. But you have an O-ring and a nut coming with the new unit, for example, here. You're just going to remove it, remove this, and you come, I think this is a size 12 if I remember correctly, undo it, pull it off, and pull it on the same side. Now when you do this, again make sure your numbers are the same, in the same order as well. For example, 1311 and 1311 for me. Uh, more importantly, this nut, when you take it out, it imagine it being hollow with two holes. Uh, you want to mark what side your holes are on because you want to line up those holes to the to the uh, lines. So what I did here is with black sharpie. If it focuses, I just lined up where that hole was. So when I put it on, it's lined up perfectly. Now you have fluid actually going through your lines because if you uh, do this screw wrong, your uh, your lines aren't going to be getting your fluid. That it needs to get. Uh, so I'm about to do second step and then come back again. It's the same thing. Just undo it, undo it, switch it. Not too bad. All right. So both lines are on, or I should say, all four lines are on. Both sides are on. And next, we're going to be moving the black assembly off. It should be one, two, three screws. And uh, kind of curious to see what this is. I'm sure this is uh, has something to do with a. Uh, flow of the fluids or something. I'll let you know in a moment. Here are two. All right, it's done. Uh, what's behind this black piece of plastic? It's pretty much a black bar uh, going along the inside to the edge. And that gold uh, piece that I was questioning you guys, or myself about more so, this thing right here, all that is is uh, point at which when this is pulled that bar has contact with that uh, I guess it just pushes it in and it causes something to happen in the motor I'm not too sure but um, it's pretty simple I don't want to videotape it with one hand in case something came loose but just hold on to it comes right off comes right on nothing snaps into place just three bolts like I said and those are size uh, two and a half uh, the other ones here I forgot to mention um, war. Where is it? These ones are just a uh, four for the original. That's it. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and test my motor out once more and move on. Good news, it works. Time to put it back in. So rather than actually showing you how to put it back in, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just reverse your steps. Uh, remember when we took out these two bolts here? Uh, you had your lower 
in your upper. Your upper you had to have removed out completely. Your lower one you could have just backed out. The reason why is when you come back to drop the top, you want to put in your bottom bolts on first. Just keep them loose to where when the top gets on, you have a hook right here. It's going to rest on that bolt and the other bolt's going through your other loop. Then again, remember to put your uh, silver U's in the clips for the sides. You have your seven bolts, size 10, going around the U. And pretty much, yeah, go backwards. Thank you.